Can you tell us, uh, your name is Patty Mancini and Vice President of Rockwell International. Yes. Can you tell us what Rockwell International's involvement in the space program has been and what, it, what you intend it to be in the future? Yes, I can. I'm very pleased to do that. As a matter of fact, Rockwell has been the United States' uh, number one contractor on space programs for over 20 years now, more like 30 years. And so we have quite a legacy, if you will, not only with our hardware, because everyone's familiar with the Apollo program. It goes way back there. As you know, we built the Apollo command and service modules. We built the Saturn rocket boosters plus the engines. And uh, that, that kind of legacy and training has been transferred now to the space shuttle program, which we're the, number, the prime contractor on. When did you get the contract for the space shuttle? Oh, stop. <laughs> okay. When did you get the contract for the space shuttle? Uh, about June of 1972. Right. And before it was launched, what did Rockwell do to get it prepared? Well, we what we say is we build, we design, we build, and we test the vehicle. Our prime responsibility is, of course, the orbiter itself. 53% of that contract now is subcontracted again, which gives you a whole new management thing, kind of thing to do. It was new on Apollo. Um, we, and who are the subcontractors? Oh, my. Well, you see most of them here in this exhibit. IBM, certainly, uh, RCA, uh, General Dynamics. And, and when we get over here, I can explain which parts they have built. Okay. Right. Um, can you tell us what plans Rockwell has for the future in outer space? Well, it's interesting. We're just now starting to discuss those kinds of things, and, and uh, I would rather not get into that detail. Okay. Uh, and this is the Rockwell... That's not to say we do think the future is in space. There's no question about that. And you're, and you're interested in the peaceful uses of that space absolutely, program. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And Rockwell is committed to that. Yes. All right. Can you, can you describe to us the exhibit that, that uh, Rockwell has put together here at, the, uh, at Unispace? Yes, I'd be glad to do that. Fine. What are the plans for Rockwell's future programs in space? Well, right now we think with the, um, the space shuttle system, as you know, we've just finished our flight test program and we're now what we call going operational. And we feel that we need to build a larger fleet of space shuttles because of the magnificent things that the system makes available to the country and to everyone. Um, for instance, if you want to do a space platform, which is certainly in the future, um, you need this system to get to get the pieces and the parts and the hardware uh, in orbit in order to do that. Do you have any other programs that are projected for the future, other than that was you just described? Uh, well, I want to ask that I, question again. I just ask that question. Okay. Again. Do you have any other programs that Rockwell has projected for the future that yes. you can describe? Yes, we have a number of programs that we're working on right now. Certainly we have a study contract, if you will, uh, on the feasibility of a, sp a space platform. But many, many uh, space contractors in the United States have similar kind of study contracts, and that way they come up with the best system possible. Uh, I think that once you have a system and a platform, it's going to allow you to do all the kinds of things that have been projected. As a matter of fact, I don't think we've even begun to realize what this system has made possible for us and those things that we can do in space. Certainly, uh, manufacturing pharmaceuticals is one of them. We've already demonstrated the feasibility of doing that with our flight test program. As you know, we've run some experiments already. Yes. So there's just a number of things. What do you expect the space platform? We're limited only by our own imaginations. That's great. What do you expect the space platform to do? Uh, I would think that it would be uh, inhabited by man, or it could be revisited, if you will. But you see, you couldn't even envision a space platform in the future if you couldn't have a system this size in order to get the parts up there to build it with. Thank you very much. Do something or just... What did you say? Yes, okay. Yes. Oh, you want me now to just start describing the system, or what this is? You tell me when you're ready. Yes. All right, this wall represents, then, Rockwell's involvement with the United States Space Program. We have here uh, 
focus is for you on the people involvement, again, the legacy back to the Apollo program. Many of these people worked on the Apollo program. They're now on the space shuttle program. So you had the learning curve was way up when you started this program, and it's helped us immensely with the success. Uh, in here, we show you a typical, this is the payload bay, if you will, and these are experiments that we've flown already to date. Um, as you can see, again, this is a system that Rockwell's responsible for. Other contractors are then responsible for those elements. Is that enough? We also have the NAVSTAR program. <laughs> Better do that over again. We also have the NAVSTAR program. Uh, and again, Rockwell builds the three main engines for the space shuttle system. So this board is really meant to depict completely our involvement in the system. Is that enough? trying to communicate with this particular display I think is explained very nicely right here and what it says is beyond our contractual obligations that Rockwell is very involved in helping potential shuttle users to with development and integration of their own payloads now this makes this system an international system anyone could come to us with an idea of a payload and then we could help them understand all the necessary requirements and things like that that would be involved we're also investing all the technologies concerned with producing products, services, and energy in space. Do you want to go on from there? Uh, I don't think this is as important, this part. I think this is what you really want for your purposes. Yeah. You want to do that again then? Okay. I'm Neil Grimaldi here in uh, Vienna, Austria at the uh, Unispace Conference sponsored by the UN. I'm here with Dr. Chuck Gould, Director of Utilization of the Space Shuttle for Rockwell International. Rockwell is the main contractor of this space shuttle. Welcome, Dr. Gould, to uh, Vienna, Austria. Can you describe for us the uh, principal uses of uh, the space shuttle? Well, the the most important part of the space shuttle really is the cargo bay that uh, contains all of the cargo that, that goes into space. The shuttle is like a truck, and its main purpose is to take things into space and to do things into space. So Can this, you describe that for so, us? So this cargo bay right here is really the, the payoff of, of the shuttle. And it, on each flight, we put a different manifest, a different set of things in the cargo bay uh, that, that then do their beneficial things in space. It could be a laboratory uh, that is put in there and stays uh, in the cargo bay and does uh, experiments and scientific work there. It can be satellites that are launched. There's a lot of satellites planned to be launched out of the, out of the shuttle. What and, satellites do you intend to launch from the uh, shuttle? Well, the most important ones, in my opinion, are the communication satellites. Uh, we know that uh, communications is a real winner in, in space. Uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have any. Now we have lots of them. It turns out that the vantage point of space is just uh, especially good for, for communications. And so, What communications uh, can be done through the space shuttle in space? Well, right now, there are satellites being launched by other boosters that do uh, all kinds of communications. A lot of the, the telephone um, calls that you would make from Vienna to, to the United States would probably go by way of a satellite that was launched into space. It just turns out that the space shuttle can do that same thing. It can do it uh, for bigger satellites. It can do it a little cheaper uh, for the current kinds of satellites that we build, and so there'd be a lot of those. And that's probably uh, as important as any of the payloads of, of, of space. Can you describe how the space shuttle gets into uh, orbit? Oh. Well, this is just the orbiter, the airplane part of it. These engines are fueled by this huge external tank, which you don't see here, uh, but you probably saw on the, on the space shuttle launch. And in addition to, the, to those engines that are fed by hydrogen and oxygen from the big external tank, there are solid rocket boosters along the side that, that give it some initial thrust also for its, its first part of the journey. And so... so uh, uh, the what keeps it in space? Well, it's, that's one nice thing about space. Once you get up there, essentially, you can stay there forever. 
Uh, the higher the orbit, the less molecules you run into, and so the less you slow down. And so the communication satellites, for example, that are in geostationary orbit, uh, they don't need anything to keep them in space. They just, they just stay and stay and stay. What utilizations does the space shuttle have for science? Well, uh, we've done a lot of science already in space with, uh, with Skylab and, and, and Apollo and those kind of things. The Europeans, as you know, have designed and built a, a space lab that fits into the, to the bay of, of shuttle. And so that allows people not only to be here, but also out in the, in the cargo bay and they can spend a week or so and do uh, an infinite variety of scientific things in the vacuum uh, of space, the, the, the looking out into space, the zero gravity of, of, of space. And so Space Lab will be flown again and again with different scientists, different uh, mission specialists, different equipment aboard it. What benefits does this have for science and technology at the present time and in the near future? Well, the, the, the number of possible benefits uh, is, is just almost too big to describe. The, there is research being done on almost every field of endeavor. Uh, materials, manufacturing, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, astronomical science, what does vacuum, what does the space environment do? Almost anything that is a scientific field at all can have a branch of that into space. What and, are the benefits of doing well. it in space? set up uh, on the ground. Well, space has the unique characteristic of its environment, particularly with a lot of science, zero gravity. And you don't have uh, the, the, the sedimentation, you don't have the thermal mixing if you've got materials of different uh, weights and densities. Uh, it's just a, a whole different environment because everything that we've done in the past thousands of years, really, as people, have been done with this, z with this one gravity pulling always in that in, in, in that way. And so it's just a it's 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 a it's a newness that will affect everything. What's what kind of satellites are projected to be launched from this space shuttle? Well I mentioned the, the communication satellites are, are very important. Also observation satellites like our United States Landsat that that can look at the Earth from the vantage point of space and, and make out uh, things that you couldn't see just when you're when you're standing here. And also you can cover large areas, and so you can map and understand and see the relationship of, uh, of the use of land and, and how the environment is working, how the weather patterns work, how the ocean currents and ocean colors work with, with very large areas. And so you, you can focus in on small areas and understand that cheaper, or you can look at very, very large areas and, and get the whole view and understand the, the whole interaction and, and process. How does this affect the third world? What benefits can be done for third world countries as a result of the space shuttle? Well, in my opinion, the, the, the third world has more to gain from space than almost anybody uh, relative to, to really what they have. You have in the third world a very young population, and it's a very increasing population. And if you're really going to have a successful world in the future, you need to have the productivity of all of us people, but particularly those in the third world, you need to have our productivity outpace our population increase, because only then will we be getting better off as individuals year by year. And, and the, the people in the third world are, are young, but they have problems in getting the kind of education that they need. But you can imagine the population increase, but you also know about the explosion of knowledge. The increase of knowledge is even... Uh, what, since this, um, this Unispace conference is basically for the benefit of the third world nations, what use does the space shuttle have for third world nations? Well, I think the most benefit from space, relative particularly to what they have, is for the third world. The third world has a population that is increasing rapidly in a lot of places. The people are very young. Uh, they need education, they need communications, they need a lot of the things that, that we have. And I think the challenge that we have in the future, and particularly in the third world, is to make their productivity, the productivity of all of us, but particularly those young people, increase faster than their population grows. Because only when you have that kind of a situation where you have each one becoming better off year by year, and that, and that truly makes a better world. And so, base in, 
in its use of communications, particularly communication satellites, can make one thing in the sky can enable a whole continent to have portable communications, communications with each other. And one thing in the sky can enable a whole continent to have educational TV programs. And you can have then just one TV set down there and it works, or you can have a million and they all work because it's coming from, from space. And so you can have show and tell kind of education. You can have portable communication so that you interconnect all of these people with extra information that they need. Because the real challenge is to connect people with information they need that's appropriate to their own situation and, and immediately useful. And I, I think space has got the best promise of anything with that, and I think that is what the developing countries need almost more than anything, uh, and that's why they're here. Also, the management of their resources and the understanding of what's going on with their land, their crops, their, their mineral resources, that sort of thing, their weather is also very important to them, and space is, is the very fastest and the cheapest way that you can get that kind of information uh, right into their needs. Does it have any military uses? Uh, there, are, there are military things in space, and there, and there, there have been, and, and, and there will be. Uh, the shuttle, like any other booster, can put things uh, um, into space, uh, and so the customers can be any kind of customers. What wonder and amazement do you expect for the future out of the space shuttle? Uh, well, the, the space shuttle is, is a futuristic vehicle. We don't really know all of the things. We do know, based on what we've done in the past, sort of extrapolate to the future, and that's why I talked about Um, in which you can go to uh, again and again and leave your scientific equipment on orbit and, and leave people on orbit for a longer period of time. One nice thing about the shuttle, it's deliberately made so that it's safe, it's an easy ride, and, and, and people of almost any kind of physical condition can withstand the, the rigor of the shuttle. You'd want to be healthy, certainly, but you can be a scientist, and if it's appropriate for you to do your scientific work in space, then you can go yourself. And the same is true of, of, all, kinds of all kinds of people. And so it's deliberately made so that it's a, it's a people-oriented kind of thing. Can you describe what you envision the space labs uh, and space platforms to be, uh, when you expect them to be operable? and what, what uses they will have? Well, technically, we can build a space station about any time we want. It takes quite a while, really, to do the initial planning and the, and, and the designs and the purchase of materials and all those kind of things. Uh, but there are no technical barriers to being able to have permanent habitats in space and, and, and a space station. And so it's a matter of, of, of when you want to do it and when the funding comes along and that sort of thing. From the point where that has begun, the proper funding is in place to the point of its completion. How much time would there be between those points, as you so envision it now? Well, there are studies going on now. So you sort of say, well, when does it really be, begin? But from the time when you do really detailed design work until the time you can have it flying, uh, you could do it in about five years. Typically, it'll take maybe a little longer than that because you may not race the program that much. You'll, you'll make it so that it's... Uh, uh, the most economically best way to, to do it. So about a minimum is five years, uh, and it may be a little longer. And I think the, a platform will, will evolve. You will, you will make it in, in a deliberate way so that you can start out with something useful, and then later on you can add different things to it to make it even more useful. What uses do you see for the space platform now? Well, the space platform can do on a continuing basis almost anything that you do here uh, on a short-term basis. And so you leave the people there longer, the equipment there longer, and you just just expand your, your capability, and you can do uh, more things. You have more power available to you. You have more resources available to you. So, so at least we know you can do 
the same things that we can do here, but you can do them longer and that sort of thing. And as time goes on, we'll discover a lot more things. I want to thank you very much, Dr. Gould. It's a real pleasure to be with you today. I hope you enjoy the Unispace Conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.